And some of you may know that there was a very sad story that happened a short time ago. And many of you here, most of you here, know the name of David Winiar's Zechot Tzadik Levrochem. David was a very, very unique friend, a friend of mine and a friend of Project Inspire. As a matter of fact, if I recall correctly, he spoke here at the very first Project Inspire convention. And David is a young man who, well, the film will really tell us who he really was. He was on his way to the AJOP convention in Maryland. He was in a terrible car accident. But I think that what happened in the events after the Petira is that the family understood that the greatest zecher for David is for us to learn from him. And he's someone that we constantly learn from. He used to call me, by the way, every few months or so with some other idea. Why don't we try this? Why don't we try this? I have a new book. I have a new idea. Let's he was a Kirov machine because he loved Yidin. His Avas Yisrael had no parallel. So let's take a look just for a moment, a little bit about the greatness of our wonderful past friend of David Winiars. Film number five. When somebody comes into my office to apply for a mortgage, I'll often um, be in the middle of something else and I might have to have them wait for me for a few minutes. In my lobby, I have copies of Cure of Oriented Svarim. People will pick these up while they're waiting for me and leaf through them. And uh, if I see that uh, you know, I have a potential client, so to speak, I uh, may encourage them to take the book with them. Uh, closing presents for my uh, not yet from clients often will be a Cure of Oriented Safer, Gateway to Judaism by Rabbi Becher. Um, or something along those lines. My father-in-law lived and breathed Avat Yisrael. My father would always differentiate between a living and a livelihood. For a livelihood, he would work. But his passion, what he did for a living, was reach out to Kla Yisrael. I think his mission was to make every Jew feel proud that he was a Jew. He knew how to focus on a person to see what would bring out the happiness of religion in that person. That was his great concept. He wanted to teach all of Kala Yisrael. He had a dream to build an empire of teachers. He would use every medium that he could, whether it was social media or just meeting people or the Shabbos table. I met Rabbi Winnie Ars, um through Facebook. So it was introduced totally in a non-religious way. When I started talking to him, I was kind of surprised because I had thought somebody um, of that level of frumkite would be a little more rabbinic. People love talking to him, and, the, and everywhere, all over, people ask him questions. They love his wit, his, his simcha sachaim, his love for other Jews. They felt it. They felt loved by him. We all felt love, uh, loved by him. He loved reaching out to other Jews because he cared about them. He wanted them to have that same wonderful life that he had. He knew that Yiddishkeit was wonderful, and he wanted to share that with other people. I think he was non-judgmental. In other words, you know, there are many people who, when they see a person who's not religious, they'll criticize him. But to him, that didn't, that didn't faze him. He just felt it was a lost soul, somebody who's looking for meaning, and he tried to inspire them. Uh, he got to know this woman who worked behind the counter in CVS, that uh, I found that she, she was Jewish, not from, she, she was expecting. And she told my father that, you know, there, she was gonna have a boy. So uh, my father came in and said, you know, to our house and said, we have, you know, six months to convince her to have a bris. And when she had the boy, she had a medical circumcision. She had no religious circumcision. And it broke his heart. He felt terrible about it. My father passed on and during the Shiva, this couple comes with their little baby to the Shiva house. She told my, my mother, she, I want to honor your husband, Rabbi David Winiers. I want to honor him. I want to do a, a bris, proper uh, bris milah for my son who's now six months old. And she said, you know, now I feel so bad that I didn't listen to him about the bris. I never gave my son a Jewish name. I would love to name my son 
after Rabbi Winnie Yars. So I said, I got a great idea for you. Why don't we do it? When does the Shiva end? The Shiva ends Sunday morning. Let's transform this house, which is a house of mourning, into a house of happiness. Let's do it Sunday afternoon. I was the Sandik, and my brother gave the Kriya Shem. He named the baby after my father. He was quite a wondrous thing to watch how the events unfolded and to actually see the success of some of our labors. It's quite uh, a moving experience. It is a great comfort to know that so soon after he's gone, there's a little adorable, gorgeous baby boy that carries his name. Now this little boy will be connected to Rabbi David Avram Winiars forever. My, the Abba fulfilled his tafkid in this world. And uh, we definitely miss him. We miss him a lot. When I put on Tefillin for the first time, the Tefillin that he connected me with, um, I felt an inner spark that I had never felt before. And it just made me feel completely renewed. He built a legacy. He built a legacy for generations to come. His positivity, his wit, his, his love for Klal Yisrael is forever going to permeate to the rest of the family and hopefully to everybody he, he was in touch with. As Jewish people, it's our responsibility to pierce through the darkness that is the world, that is the craziness of the world in a world God mad that we live in, and set the right example. It's not a matter of being better, which we're not. It's simply a matter of having a different responsibility. Let's be the lighthouse. Let's set a good example.